I'm sure that everybody watching this channel loves Canonical, and you love them so much that you would love to work for them. And I'm sure you also know that when you go through an application or an interview process, you generally don't want to waste the hiring manager's time. You want to make sure your resume, your portfolio, and everything else you're giving them is going to be accessible. Well, if you apply for Canonical, that might not be the case. If you want to work on the Ubuntu WSL engineering team, all it requires is a simple review of your resume, a written interview, which is this step, which we're going to look at in just a bit, a standardized aptitude and personality assessment, a culture, HR, PR interviews, and tech assessments, and interviews with the hiring manager and senior lead, along with um, writing an essay. Not a short one either. This is less about proving if you're a good fit for the company and more about proving if you're insane enough to jump through all of these hoops. So this is an email received from someone who was applying to join this position. Immediately upon receiving this information, they withdrew their application and then posted the email online. Now the length of this interview is one thing. Going just by the bullet points, there is 38 questions. So assuming really short answers for everything, like 30 words, which is way shorter than some of these questions require, you could write it in maybe, you know, 1200 to 1500 words. But a lot of these dot points are two, three, even some of them five questions in a single dot point. So it's much closer to 50 or 60 questions. And judging by how much you'd have to write for some of these questions, for example, describe your experience with Linux-based software development or outline your thoughts on quality in software development. What practices do you find most effective to drive improvements in quality? That requires at least like a hundred word answer. So this is probably closer to like maybe a 5,000 word essay. And that's no guarantee you're getting the job. And that's really at a minimum. You could write so much more for this. You could probably get yourself to 10 or 20,000 words, depending on how much effort you actually want to put into this. And at a reasonable pace, let's go with 5,000 words. It's probably going to take you maybe an entire day to fill out. But that's not even the best part. The best part is the mistakes and the kind of insane questions being asked for the level of experience this position seems to need. So let's find out what the job is actually about. So second line after the introduction, thanks for your application to joint the Ubuntu WSL engineering team. So... Already right here, this is enough to get your application thrown out, but it's fine to have mistakes in the, uh, in the interview doc itself. This is where it gets really fun. Very occasionally, there is an opportunity to define something completely new in the world of software. We think that WSL is precisely that. Something completely new, not a virtualization system like Hyper-V or KVM or VMware, and not a workstation cloud simulator like Multipass. Now is someone going to tell them what WSL actually is? Because I don't think they know. Unless they're using really out of date tech, they're probably using WSL2. WSL2 is based on Hyper-V. It's literally a VM running in Hyper-V. So it is correct to say that it's not virtualization software, but to think it's not a VM is kind of insane. Moving on, WSL is a true cross-platform synthesis of Windows and Linux. We are excited to explore it and enable amazing new developer experiences on it. I don't think they know what cross-platform means, because it doesn't mean WSL. WSL runs on Windows. It just runs on Windows and nothing else. I think what they're using cross-platform to mean is running Linux binaries on Windows, but it's not running Linux binaries on Windows. It's running Linux binaries inside of a virtual machine running on Windows that is just a very lightweight VM and integrates into the desktop. It, that's not cross-platform. That's not what cross-platform means whatsoever. And of course, this is an unusual role at Canonical. We would like to build a team of developers that have deep experience and personal interest in both the Windows developer experience and the Linux developer experience. So judging by that, it sounds like it'd be a fairly, you know, senior position 
a position that requires a, quite a few years of actually doing real world work. But then there are the questions. And the first question asks you, how did you fare in high school mathematics, physical sciences, and computing? What sort of high school student were you outside of required work? What were your interests and hobbies? In languages and the arts of high school, what were your strongest subjects and how did you rank in them among your school peers? It's one thing to be asking this stuff in like a very junior position. Like this is your first dev position, your first networking position, anything like that. But the amount of experience that they are asking for, this person at the absolute earliest, if they started doing developer stuff fairly early, may be late 20s, but far more likely in their mid 30s or late 30s. And many people in this range probably don't remember their age, let alone their experiences at high school. But speaking about not wasting the interviewer's time, why does it ask you which degree and university did you choose and why? It's one thing to ask why did you choose that thing you chose, but as for what you did and where you went, that's probably already on your resume. You already have that information, why are you asking for it again? But the other university questions are just as bad as the high school questions. Why does it matter what sort of person I was in high school or university? Why does it matter what sort of things I was doing in my spare time? For this kind of position, years and years would have passed, and the kind of person you were back then has basically no relevance to the kind of person you are today. Basically what they're asking here is for you to come up with some idealized version of yourself, either having a perfect form where everything you did was great and you learned so many great things, you spent so much of your time focusing on using Ubuntu and learning Windows development, doing all of this stuff that they want for the position, or using that to explain how you got over specific problems that never actually happened. You're just using it to sort of boost yourself up. As for the engineering experience, these are all fairly reasonable questions, albeit a lot of them. And this is where we started seeing questions that were multiple questions in one. For example, this one here. Outline your thoughts on open source development. If you say you hate it, I'm not sure why you're trying to work for an open source company. What is important to get right in open source projects? What open source projects have you worked on? Have you been an open source maintainer? If so, can you point to those projects? That is four questions. I'm going to merge these two together because this one can't exist by itself. That's four questions. Why is there just one dot point? And you gotta love the questions where nobody is saying no or nobody is saying they don't like that, like that one, but also like, would you describe yourself as a strong engineer? Why am I applying for this position? Would you describe yourself as a strong architect? The answer to that question is yes, nobody is saying no to that. Just skip that part and say, why are you a strong engineer? Why are you a strong architect? And if so, what sort of applications? But hey, do you have a public platform where you communicate about the industry? A medium, a Twitter, a YouTube, or a personal blog? If so, please provide links. How many times have I criticized Canonical? Uh, it's not that much. Only a, only a few times. Ignoring this video. Uh, not too many, I would say. And I do appreciate the question, are you a thought leader in any particular area of technology? Like, if you think of yourself as a thought leader and you're not someone like, you know, Linus Torvalds or Richard Stallman or Greg Crower Hartman or someone like that, I think you need to come down off of your pedestal and look at the real world for a bit. You may say even touch some grass and get a bit of sunlight. And you can't have a corporate position without some level of uh, corporate stroking, telling the management why their company is so great. Outline your thoughts on the mission of Canonical. What is it about the company's purpose and goals which is most appealing to you? Who are competitors to Canonical? And what does Canonical need to change to be a more effective competitor? Which current dynamics in the cloud software industry are favorable to Canonical? Which are unfavorable? Why do you most want to work for Canonical? And most importantly, which Canonical products and services would you like to work on most? Well, I don't know, maybe the ones for the position that I'm applying to. And don't forget, when you have the opportunity to interview in person, please feel free to grill your interviewers their views of the role and of Canonical. Now, there is a couple of missing commas there, which is another problem, but you asked to be grilled, so here you go. 
Now, it's one thing to filter out applicants because they might not be a good fit. Maybe they don't have the correct engineer experience. Maybe they haven't worked with the correct product stacks. Maybe they don't even have the correct level of writing experience you need for whatever the position actually is. Now, it's one thing to filter out applicants based on them not being a good fit for the role. Maybe they don't have the correct engineering experience, in this case, Linux and Windows. Maybe they haven't worked with the correct product stacks. Maybe they don't have the level of writing experience you need for whatever the position actually is. But it's another to go and actively waste the applicant's time and then self-sabotage your ability to get good applicants. Anybody who is a good applicant probably has a bunch of other either interviews lined up or positions they want to apply for. You're not the only company on the planet, and if this is just going to waste their time with no guarantee they're getting the job, a lot of people are just going to go somewhere else. And at the end of the day, all you're going to be left with is people who are incredibly desperate for the position and may not even be a correct fit. Maybe that's the goal though. Whittle down the group to the people who are absolutely obsessed with Canonical or people who are willing to do absolutely anything to make sure they get the position. People who are going to be there basically to just be corporate simps. But something else about this is it's not just the applicant's time being wasted. Sure, writing out a 5,000 word essay is going to take you a lot of time. The hiring manager did this to themselves. They're going to have to sit down and read multiple 5,000 word essays just to find someone who may be a good fit and then go through another three or four steps just to work out if that person is going to be in the position. I wouldn't want to be in that spot. Now, sadly, the original poster didn't go and post the job listing alongside the email itself, so we're not really sure about what the salary range was or what the exact requirements were, but if this position was for anything less than like 150 to 200,000, basically just walk and find somewhere else that isn't going to waste your time and isn't going to try to micromanage every little thing you're trying to do just to get a foot in the door. Because if this is what they're asking for before you have the job, I don't want to see what they're asking for when you're actually doing the job. And judging by the fact that Canonical has had many positions open for many months, and if you look at the reviews on Glassdoor, it doesn't exactly seem like a great place to work, the email itself doesn't surprise me whatsoever. If you'd like to read through all of the questions yourself, I'll leave it linked in the description down below, and I'll also leave the original Reddit threads where this was posted down there as well. Some of the comments on there are absolutely incredible. Some people are saying this is an absolutely terrible practice and nobody should ever work for Canonical. Other people are saying this is a perfectly fine practice, and if you want to work for this position, you have to go through the requirements they desire. And for me, I'm perfectly fine not working at Canonical. I didn't have plans to do so anyway, but now it's on the internet. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. I would love to hear them, and I would love to hear from the perspective of someone who actually does have maybe a junior level or senior level, any sort of actual engineer experience. What was your experience going through the interview process? Did you see something like this, or was it something a bit more, you know, down to earth, trying to find someone actually good for the position? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video, and if you really like the video and you want to become one of it, these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, Stone Bearer Pay link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.